Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Uh, we return for the reassembly phase of this uh, 2016 Jeep Compass 2.4 liter four wheel drive. It's actually all wheel drive. Uh, the thing came in with a very, very dead transmission unit and uh, we've ordered a, uh, a replacement remanufactured Mopar unit from the dealer. Uh, it has been uh, removed, dropped out of the vehicle separated the engine from the transmission, removed the old trans from the subframe. I installed the new trans and then bolted the engine and the uh, four wheel drive transfer unit, which is this, uh, this unit right back here. That's all been reassembled. It's all bolted together. This thing is uh, ready for reinstallation. So what I need to do is let the car back down onto the subframe, get the bolts into it, thread the bolts, start the bolts, Get everything bolted back in and then uh, we can start to reconnect all of the systems and then uh, we'll add fluid add ac refrigerant put the battery and whatnot back in and then we can uh, restock things the engine to see if this thing is going to ship so stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video oh real quick disclaimer before the intro starts uh, if you missed any of the previous videos in this particular jeep or would like to go back and refresh yourself just check the links down in this video's description and they will take you back in time Beginning intro now. Opening Z hood. Yeah. All right, ready to get started. I'm gonna go ahead, get the Jeep off the locks. I'm gonna lower it down and uh, start to fit this powertrain back into the engine compartment. Or actually, more accurately, we're gonna fit the engine compartment over top of the powertrain. Uh, you can see the struts are kind of in the way and uh, the thing's a little off center because it fell down. No worries, we're going to get it close and then uh, we'll maneuver this thing around slightly. Get everything lined back up. Okay, first things first, I need to get the strap off the struts so I can pull them out past the body. Then we'll lower it down some more and as we need to, I can nudge this assembly in any direction we need uh, to get everything to go ahead and line up. I, I think it's all pretty close. We got the one bolt there, which is yeah, this is about an inch that way and half inch that way. Uh, probably a similar misalignment on that side, but we'll uh, we'll get it all together. So let's get in here and lose this uh, this strap. We don't need this anymore. Woo! Strut gravity. These are gonna flop out a little bit, but no worries. They're not uh, they're not gonna fall. Let's get rid of that. Goodbye strap. And I need to pull this thing kind of back and give it some lean action because we have to get these to line up with those holes right there as it comes down. Let's see the passenger side. That looks pretty good. That's all out of the way. Axles are in. That's all bolted on. Lines are on. This is all looking good. I need to move this power steering line over. That was kind of a in the way earlier when we took the unit apart. Uh, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and let her down some more. Very, very slowly. We only get to go a couple inches at a time and then I've got to recheck the alignment and uh, make sure there's nothing that's gonna become damaged. Because generally, if you set cars down on top of car parts, they, uh, they run the risk of becoming broken. Just one of those things. Let's see how we're doing here. Looking good, we're looking good here. Uh, I'm looking good right here. Kind of a tight squeeze. Look at that. We got like a like a nanometer of space. I'll have to be sure to check that in a minute. I don't want to smash the radiator. Coming down a little farther. If we hear a crunch, we've gone too far. Keep that out of the way. Uh, recheck over here, rechecking back here. So far, so good. Rechecking here, here, and here. Okay, we still have clearance. This is good. Continuing some down action. And we're just gonna drop this down a couple inches at a time. Over and over and over again. Recheck. Now we can check it from inside. How about that? Looking good. I'm gonna need to pull the cables out of the way so the motor mount doesn't smash them. 
that would be bad. Looking good from the passenger side of the top side. And strut is good still. Let's keep the, uh, the descent going. Coming down some more. So close. All right, now that we're super close, I'm gonna go ahead and get the transmission lines connected. They bolt on on the side through the wheel well. And the new trans came with uh, some new hard lines, these steel ones, but I'm just gonna reuse the ones that are currently on the vehicle because they've got uh, they've got the factory connections, uh, the crimps are still there, and uh, I'd rather not just uncrimp those and then have to put new crimps on. So I'll just reuse these metal lines right here. So I'm taking those ones off. Okay, so here's the two banjo bolts on the new trans. We're gonna pull those out. There's one of them. Oh, by the way, I have uh, flushed the transmission fluid cooler. So if there's uh, any debris in the system, I have uh, already removed it. I did that when you guys weren't looking. Give me that crush washer, come here. Okay, that one goes through. And a tight squeeze in here, as soon as this is done, we can finish putting this assembly back together. There we go. Oh, I dropped one of my washers. Not okay. Come back. Get in there. Oh, it's hot inside this wheel well. There's no airflow going on. I'm dying in here. Woo, buddy. Let's tighten this stuff up. From the top. Giving it some reach around action here. I'm holding the I'm holding the line from the top and I'm screwing them in through the wheel well. Not exactly super easy. I think that's good. Yeah, they're they're in now. Let's run these guys down slowly. There we go. Okay, lines are on. Let's continue the descent. All right, we're getting pretty close here. The struts are up in their holes. They haven't reached the uh, the mounts yet. There's still a lot of space there. But what's important here is that the subframe mounts are reaching their uh, their bolt holes here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start to make this thing safe right now. Let's go ahead and get uh, some of these bolts threaded. Get everything started. That way the thing can't fall out and then uh, I can maneuver it around with a little bit more confidence. So I think what I'll do is I'll get this center bolt kind of started on the on the driver's side and then we'll go over to the passenger side and figure out how to get that one aligned and set up and then uh, we can get the rear ones in place. That should be good. I think we're good here. Let's go uh, check that other side. Mm. All right, passenger side. We're not uh, not quite as fortunate. Gravity. We need to go up a little bit on the passenger side. Uh, let's fetch the floor jack. Here, we can borrow this one from that side. That was just taking some weight off of that front cross member, but we can use this one. So what I need to do is get this guy under the subframe on this side and pick this subframe up. Uh, looks like about an inch or so. That should give me uh, what I'm looking for here. Now I've still got this jack under the engine, so that one's not going to go anywhere. Everything's pretty secure and stable at this point, for the most part. There we go. Okay, this side's looking pretty good, I think, now. A little bit of up action got us lined up just fine. Perfect. All right, we've got the subframe lined up. We've got the one, two bolts in, the two on the other side back there are in. The two on this front cross member right here are now in position. I've got a floor jack underneath of the strut and we need to pick this strut up, get the, uh, the studs in the strut aligned with the holes in the top of the strut tower and then we can get that bolted in. Once these struts are kind of bolted in, 
I'll go ahead and lift the car up and we can start connecting uh, all of the uh, auxiliary systems. I realize I'm skipping around some, but this is not the type of operation that uh, is conducive to safe filming during uh, reassembly because I am dealing with very, very heavy parts that are just uh, hanging out dangling by jack stands. Uh, we saw how that works out the other day. If uh, an error is calculated or made, that's pretty close. You know, operate this jack with my foot. A little bit of up. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm aligning it by my hand over here on one side and then I'm pushing down on it with the foot to get the pumps to come up. There we go. Let's get these nuts in. Now we're safe on uh, on the whole assembly here. The struts in, the uh, engine's bolted in, subframe's bolted in. I still got to get uh, the mounts in place and everything like that. But for the most part, it's all good. Things not going to go anywhere now. No more falling down. Roll this on back to the other control arm here. Okay, moving. Whoa, that seemed to have uh, did what I wanted it to do. Kind of violent to me. I wonder what, what got stuck. Get in there. Actually, I need to let this down some more. What is happening? All right, again, camera was down. I had to kind of raise this up some and let it settle. I managed to push that stud uh, into position, so now I'm gonna go up with the jack and we'll push those uh, remaining studs into their position and yeah, it's still not lined up. Let's give it a, give it a push here. Yeah. Better, much better. All the way up and we'll get our nuts on. Now everything is secure and bolted in. So we're gonna go ahead, raise this assembly up, inspect it from the bottom side, and then uh, well, we'll go from there. All right, let's go ahead and let down all the jacks that we don't need. Get that one out of here. I do not need this jack stand. Actually, we don't need any of the jack stands. I just need the floor jack under the engine here so I can align that properly with the mount. There we go. Let's go ahead and get that last engine mount in on this side. I think it's down here somewhere. Where is it? There you are, engine mount. I can see you. This guy slips down in here underneath of the uh, washer fluid reservoir. That goes right there. We need to go up a little bit farther until it makes some good contact. There we go. That's more space. We'll get these guys started. All three of the 13 mil bolts, and then there's the, the big ones that bolt them out to the, the frame itself. There we go. Okay, need to let it down some so it kind of pivots that way. Slowly. Hmm. Oh, that's not cool. Started to bind a little bit. Here, we'll do that. Yeah. So close. So closer. Almost there. A little bit more. Okay, what I'm going to do is push that engine back. And we'll get the first of the mount bolts started and threaded. The other two, a little bit more of a challenge. I need to pull the engine that way now. Let me reach in here. Sorry, I know you guys can't really see much of what I'm up to. Can't do anything about it. And the third bolt, let's get that guy lined up. Right there. No problem. Fix. Come here. Number three. And there we go. Nice. 
Nice. All right, now again, I'm gonna run this engine up with the floor jack to close the distance right here. And we can run these bolts down. This is gonna start to take up some of the weight. So we're gonna see this engine come up slightly. Get on there. There we go. All right, that one's in. Okay, moving over here to the driver's side, we've gotta close some space between the trans mount and the transmission. I've got the floor jack moved over. So we're just gonna run that up slightly. There we go. And we can start to get the, uh, the rest of these bolts in place here. There's two short ones and two long ones. Let's get all these guys started. And long one coming in, long one almost going down. Long bolt gravity. There we go. That one. And once they're all started, I'll use the gun to go ahead and draw this down. Or pull the trans up. Depends on how you look at it. 19. Or no, I'm mistaken, that's a 18. 18. I'm gonna get them all tight first. That way they all evenly start to take some weight. And then we can tighten them down. Click. Twice. Thrice. Click four. All right, engine mounts in, transmission mount is in. The subframe is bolted on. The front uh, member in the center here is bolted on. Let's pull the jacks out. It is now safe, secure, and stable. We can proceed to uh, button up all of the uh, support equipment. Yay! All right, let's go ahead and raise this thing up and we're gonna pull everything away from the supports. Clean up this bit of a mess down here. Love a bit of a mess. Yeah, so far, so good. Very good shape. Very nice. Moving back up. Okay, let's get some absorbent mats into our areas of additional spillage. We'll clear these stands out of the way so I can roll around with relative ease. And let's get in here and take a peek at uh, what the underside is looking like to make sure we have uh, nothing pinched or binding or broken. Don't let me forget to put the torque converter bolts back in. This is all looking good. Everybody's in position. That's good. Good over here. Let's check the steering shaft and make sure that went uh, back into the cabin and it did. Uh, let's see, this wire is for my rear O2. We'll connect that later. Let's plug that power steering hose back in while we're here. That's good. Yep, let's go ahead and get these bolts tight and then uh, we can proceed. Just draw it right on up. Clicks. Nice. All right, next two subframe bolts, we're gonna go through the control arm with an extension. Clicks. You guys couldn't see. That was uh, my cameraman error. My apologies. That one's tight. And we've got these two 15s right here and then uh, that whole assembly is completely installed. Yay! Secure. Okay, I've got the two exhaust bolts going in next while we're back here. Just getting rid of hardware and getting things bolted together. It's a little bit of a process. As soon as I'm done with this, we can go up top and uh, start to make connections on uh, other units. So the real question is, is can my non-wobbly 15 reach these 15s? And the survey says, yeah. Click. 
Uh, that one's not gonna reach. Okay. You know, I might have been sending that a little bit too hard. Let's just try this with the ratchet. It's probably best. Ah, click. Oh, come on, come out. Oh no. I've gotten my wiggly bit stuck. It's not okay. All right, exhaust is in, that's good to go. And nothing else down here I need. That's tight, that's connected and plugged in. Uh, we won't be back here until the drive shaft needs to go in. Good. I know, we can go ahead and get the AC lines in. Let me pull my paper towels out from the compressor. You guys can't see. I have those plugged in there, so uh, debris would not enter the compressing unit. We'll put the hose back up where it goes and slide it over the stud. Real tight squeeze in there, I don't think you guys can see. I can barely see. That's one on. And the other hose, I don't know if I can reach it. I tucked it in the fan. Yeah, I'll have to get that from the top side, okay. Okie dokes, Jeep coming back down. Let's start making connections from uh, inside of the engine compartment. Oh, hang on. One more jack stand. All right, back up top, we're on the passenger side. Let's start getting some of this uh, other equipment bolted together. So we'll do, we've got the reservoir for the power steering here. I'll get the line on there next and we'll, uh, we'll get that thing installed. And we'll kind of just move however, however the flow says we're gonna move here. I don't know, there's really no order of operations for this, just put stuff back together. Let's get the clamp on the power steering. That line's tight already. I did that when you guys weren't looking. So we're good here. Ground strap is on. This is all bolted on. Motor mounts are on. Uh, what is this and where did it go? That went to... Is there a coolant over... There was a coolant overflow bottle that went here, right? Isn't that what, what this is for? I don't remember. Hmm. Well, yes. Yes, in fact, there is a coolant bottle that goes there. So, let's go ahead and put that on right now. I think it clips in, and then there's a bolt right here. Yep, and flashlight down. My hat did it. There's our bolt. Conveniently, I still have my 13 clickage. That's good to go. Moving on. Here, let's go ahead and get the heater core hoses back in. We'll plug those guys on and get those clamped. Get that out of the way. I guess we're starting at the, the back side this time. And I have that backwards. I have failed. So this one, yeah, that one goes there. That's more better. Plug that in, plug that one in. We'll get the clamps on next. There we go. Using my not hose clamp pliers. It's kind of far to reach back there, so I'm using my big needle noses for extra long reaching action. Get in there. There we go. Clamp numero dos. Or uh, numero zwei. Zwei auf Deutsch. Du en Francais. Or Canadian. <laughs> there we go. All right. Two clamps are on. What is next? How about... The vacuum hose for the booster that goes next I think that runs up top so that won't interfere with much we'll plug that guy in back to the brake booster we go get in there please and I think I need to figure out how these cables get organized maybe I should hook up the cables for the transmission first where are those guys oh well here's one there's the shift cable, I can bolt that down. But I want to get the electrical connectors. I think these are them. I don't remember what they where they went. But I'll figure it out, no worries. There's so many, so many places that they could be. Let's bolt this guy in right here. Get on there, 13 mil please, thank you. And bolt number two, that one's in. The bracket's on. This bracket's on. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. Back to the 13. Oh, that's uh, wrong socket. I guess that's a 12. I have miscalculated my calculations. Where's my 12? There it is. 
Come here, 12. I hope I missed that. Yeah, yeah, 12. I was gonna say, that looked like a 13, but my micrometer appears to be out of a calibration. Need to work on that. Move air box tube thing, get out of the way. Come here. Yeah. Shift cable bracket has been bracketed. Uh, I'd like to connect the two electrical connectors. But I don't remember which ones they were. Is this one of them? Does that connect there? Nope, sure doesn't. Hmm. These ones? And survey says uh, negative. That's an ECM connector. That does not go there. Well, where'd they go? I know they're here somewhere. Um, I think these are it. Yeah, yeah, I found them. Good. That's a rocker clip. That goes there. This one goes right here. Beautiful. Clip that on, and then there's another clip down here that holds that to the transmission line. Let's clip that on. There we go. Lower radiator hose. Let's plug this guy in before we run out of space. There we go. Nice. And I will bust out the hose clamp pliers to get that clamp because that's a big one. It'll be hard to manipulate with just needle noses. So I'm not going to. Got it. Okay. Lower hose is on. Okay. Oh, you know what? While we're here, let's just go ahead and bolt down those uh, those nuts for the struts. Strut nuts. Strut your nuts or nut your struts. Nick. Okay. Yeah, that's two. A couple more real quick. I'll finish up that section of the operation. Yeah. Uh, this one. Go on, wobbly. Get in there. Hmm. Wobble bit fail. Not, not dangled properly. Get that fuel line out of there. Good. All the nuts are secure. While we're here, I'll fetch that fuel line. We can route that and uh, plug that thing back into the fuel rail. That goes under and clips on right here. Fuel line secure, this is good. Next item of business, how about this evap line way down yonder? Plug that guy in. Oh, beautiful. It's going together wonderfully. I like it. Okay, we have a bracket for an air box that uh, covers up this transmission mount over here. Now, I forget exactly how that went, but I think, I think I got it, no problem. Yep, that's good. Let's get this thing bolted in. A couple 13s. I think three 13s to be precise. Did I tighten all those? Yes, yes I did. I remember. Hmm, I'm short 113. Yep, third 13 right here. We'll secure this thing. Get the nuts tight. Good. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get our uh, air filter box installed on its bracket. And we can connect the uh, intake tube right over here. We'll put the PCV hose back on on the back side. Then we can bolt the uh, ECM back to the uh, top of the air box here. Let's get that bolt in. This one right here, get those guys on. And then the ECM bolts right up here on top. I've got to do the battery and the battery tray last because right here is the fill hole. Uh, for the transmission, and I have not filled that full of fluid yet. I actually dropped the ball on that. I forgot to order the fluid. 
so I'm kind of uh, waiting for that. I'm in limbo. All right, DCM coming in. There's three bolts, and one of these had a had a random ground wire somewhere. I gotta figure out where that thing went. I remember it bolted onto one of the corners, but uh, I don't see it. It's here, it didn't go far. I know it's here, because I took it off. Oh, I got it, there it is. Dangling right over here. So let's get, let's get the ECM connectors on. That one goes there. This ground wire bolts onto this corner right here. That's the, one of the ECM grounds. Okay, looking good. Clicks. Twice. And thrice. There we go. Got a hose clamp for the uh, air intake. Let's get that guy clamped up real quick. We're in the home stretch now. We need to go uh, back down below one more time and get the drive shaft installed. But I think up here we're all set with the exception of the battery and the battery box and uh, a cable or two. Here's one of them. Let's get that cable back on. That's how that goes. Oh, come here, nut. I'll make this more tighter later. Ah, oh, clicks. Very good. All right, moving back up. Uh, I've got two nuts left for the AC lines. I have not installed those yet. So uh, let's get this back up one more time. We'll do the AC lines, the drive shaft, the drive shaft heat shield. And then by the time we're done with all that, I'm hoping that my, uh, my fluid shows up and then I can get this thing refilled. And then we can restocking the engine take this thing out on the road and see if it's gonna move like I said it barely got its way here it did not move was not a very happy transmission oh uh, let's see where's those lines oh yeah yeah I gotta do that that reaching up and around action here both the lines are on the compressor just got to get those nuts on and uh, make it tight Ow. there's one Nut number two going in and up on the other line. I know it's getting dark, you guys can't see. Oh yeah, the torque converter bolts. That's uh, not gonna work if I don't put the bolts in. Yeah, we need to do that too. I've got some new ones over there on the on my cart. They came with the, the new transmission. So you're reaching up in there, we're gonna get the compressor hoses compressed and clicked on. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing here. I can't. That's one tight. And there's number two. There we go. All right, good to go. Okay, back up at the front of the engine. Let's get, let's get a, a bar on the crank bolt and we can rotate the crank to get a hold or get uh, get those bolts lined up and we will go ahead and start to thread these guys now before I tighten them uh, as always I'm gonna go and spin this around and get all of them uh, threaded first there we go I need more thread than that and we'll draw that in just a little bit okay now we can spin this thing around Get over to the next bolt. There we go. And the new ones came with the thread lock. That's how you know they're good. Tighten that one down some. Clankity clank. That's just the uh, torque converter flopping around. Actually, the flex plate thing flopping around. I will also say that that flex plate design is very, very kind of small. It's not even a flex plate. It's more of a, you know, just a plate. Does that say Kia on it? Yeah, it does. Look at that. Hyundai Kia. 
See that? This thing has Hyundai Kia parts in it. Busted Chrysler. We got you again. Chrysler, Dodge, Mercedes, Sadies, Jeep, Fiat, Hyundai, Kia. We're adding a list. Look, yeah, see there's the Chrysler sign. And then right behind it, it said Hyundai, Kia. And these OEMs, they can't even be loyal to their own brand. And then they expect us to be loyal to their brand. What kind of nonsense is this? It's hypocrisy is what it is. And that's uh, almost a cross-threaded bolt. Also, not good. What have I done? Whoa, there it goes. Let me back this up some. Right, right there. Round two. Try again. Go on there, please. Seriously? The other ones are too tight. And it won't turn. See how it won't flip and flop? I went too far. Neutral drop. There we go. Now is it flip flop? Sure does. All right, let's rotate the Hyundai Kia transmission around on the Fiat engine. And they called it a Jeep. Come on, guys. Did they not think that social media would expose their treachery? Or did they not think that it mattered? There we go. All right. Let's get these things tight. Tickage. Spin her around. Next. More clickage. That's, uh, oh, went too far. A click too far. Haha. All right, that's three of them. Mm, clickage again. Next. There's our last one. Run that one down. Give that one a good click and then we'll uh, we'll torque wrench that. Ah, there we go. All right. Torque converter is installed. So now the engine and transmission are officially mechanically connected. All right, drive shaft coming in next. There's the business end. Let's get that thing reinstalled back into the rear of the four wheel drive unit. Uh, please flying in, you're kind of heavy. There we go. That's splined in. Let's get our carrier up in position here. And then out back, let me spin you guys around. Out back, we'll go ahead and set this thing up. You can't see what I'm doing. We'll go ahead and get this thing on the rear diff. And then we'll bolt the carrier in. Hope you guys can see. Get in there. Okay. That's in, and carrier bolts next. Two carrier bolts. I think I got them down here. Let's push this thing up. Here, hold that up. Yeah. There we go. That one's going. Woo! Now we're safe. The shaft can't fall and hit me in the head. Okay, a little bit of tightening action. And then we'll get that one. It's way, way up here. Get in there. Slide. There. Stay. Wow! It didn't stay. It tried to hit me. It tried to hit my gun. Yeah. Got it. Begin threading, come on. Okay, that's in. That one's tight. That one's not tight. Now it is wonderful. Front of the shaft is in, middle of the shaft is in, and the back of the shaft needs bolted in. All right. Okay, three nuts are in on the shaft. Fourth one's on top, and I, I can't rotate it because this transmission is an arc. So I have to remember to not forget that uh, that fourth nut up there. 
Let's see if we can't get these tight. Shaft clickages. Give it back. Okay, so I don't know if I'm gonna have to add any additional uh, fluid to this trans or not uh, once we get it started. So uh, rather than having to pull the battery and the tray back out, I just connected the jumper box to the uh, battery terminals. Uh, I believe that'll be sufficient just to start this thing. We need to start the engine, put it in gear, cycle through all the gears uh, a couple times, and then, uh, then we can pull the plug out of the trans and make sure that uh, the fluid level is appropriate. So, uh, no connection at the terminals. Hang on, we have no power. Here, we'll give these guys a bit of a wiggle. I believe we have connection now. Let us go stocking the engine. Here we go. It's been a long time restarting. Ah, oh, that jump box is junk. Hang on. Okay, engine starting attempt number three. And I hate jumper boxes. Engine starting complete. Woo, it is alive. All right. Let's go check for fluid leaks real quick. Nothing pouring out of it. I hear power steering noise. Let me find some fluid. We'll top that off real quick. There's some. We'll let it come up to temp uh, once it reaches, I think like 140 degrees. Smoking. Once we reach 140 degrees, then uh, we can go ahead and check that trans fluid level. Throw this guy up real quick so that noise stops. Fill it on up. There we go. Okay, let's head into the cabin real quick. And uh, we'll put this thing in gear a couple times. All right, there's reverse. I felt it go into gear. That's neutral. That's drive. Felt it go into gear. The wheels are turning. So it is working. Okay. Back to park. Let's go up a little bit. It's pretty close to the ground. There we go. It's probably safer. Okay. Back and drive. The wheels are turning. It's working. That means our torque converter is full. Neutral. Reverse. Does it have reverse? Yes, it does. Back to park. Okay. Let's go ahead and lift this thing up and we'll pull the uh, the fill plug, or the fill level plug. Make sure our fluid level is correct. Moving back up. All right, that's pretty good. Let's slide down under in the rolly chair. Take a look at uh, the underneath carriage real quick. I see something has dripped. Hmm, I wonder what it is. Probably just some spillage from the top earlier. No biggie right now. We'll wash it off and recheck later. So anyway, this little plug right here that is our warm uh, fill level mark. So what we do is we uh, we add our fluid, we run it through the gears a couple times, let it come up to temp, and then we'll pop this open and we'll let it drain until it's uh, almost like dripping empty. And let's go ahead and start right now just to take a peek, see what's going on here. There's my, looks like I'm gonna need a, uh, a 3 8 I don't know if I can do this by hand. Yeah, I can. Okay, let's just crack this guy open some. See if anything comes out. Okay, not yet, nothing coming out yet. So, let's add some more. I'm going to need a stool to step on. Swing this thing right on over here. Need our funnel, climb it back up. The coolant's looking good. Let's put that cap back on. So coolant's full, power steering's full, AC is full, transmission is not yet full. Throw that guy back down in the hole. 
And yes, we do check level with the unit running. Let's go ahead and get a new can. Fill it on up. Okay, down below again, fluid recheck. We're waiting for some of it to drip out. Here we go, we got some drip action going on. So what I'll do is I'll pull this until it's nearly done draining. I actually think I put in a couple extra just now. Ooh, noises. Bubbly. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Let's pull this plug one more time here and see what kind of flow we get. All right, yeah, that's about right. Might be a little bit over, but I'm gonna leave it just like that for now. Let's go ahead and lock that thing in. We're gonna let this truck down. We need to go ahead and get the battery uh, tray installed. And uh, that all the way locked in? Yeah, that's all the way. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the battery tray and the battery installed. Uh, we'll get the skid plate on, let this thing down, and uh, shut it off, let the fluids cool, and then we'll uh, we'll do another heat cycle, warm everything back up, and then check all the levels. Uh, then we can go out and hit the row ad. Let's get that out of here. Jeep coming back down, all the way down. Okay. Get all of our goodies out of here. Don't need that. We don't need this. Get that guy out of here. Throw you in the box. We need to put our plug back in. That's our fill plug. There's no dipstick on this transmission. It is not equipped. Uh, we can see all of our smoking has stopped. It's probably fingerprints and whatnot that I caused. There we go. Okay, let's head back into the cabin. Let's go ahead and shut this thing down. Let's see, we have we have no warning indicators. AC is cold. It's up to operating temp. Powering down. Let's disconnect our temporary electron supply here. Get rid of this thing. Ooh, that's hot. Wipe off some spillages and fingerprints and all that good stuff. Don't need that. Score. Jordan. There we go. Okay, battery tray. This thing's up next. Let's get the clamp out of there, the bolts out of there, and we'll slide that thing into place. Oh, there's some fluid in there. We need to clean that out. Hang on. Begin extracurricular shiny now. Come off. Come off. There. If you hit it too hard, it breaks that. It's never good. Oh, I screwed it all up. There we go. Let's get that stuff out. Don't want all that nasty in there. Goodbye, old fluid. There we go. Much more better earth. Okay, while all that stuff dries up, let's slip this battery tray down into its home here. It's got one stud on the frame rail, slides over the stud, and then there's the four bolts that secure it. Get on there. What do you, what's in the way? Wiring harness? Not for long. There. Got it. It didn't click, but it went into place. Let's get the bolts started here. And the nut, one nut, four bolts. It's a lot of a lot of hardware for a battery tray. But it's also like a cantilevered battery tray because it doesn't have any support on this side. It's just kind of bolted to the top of the frame and sort of dangles off like a balcony or something like that. It's not really a balcony. Uh, this one, 13 millimeters of click action coming in. Get all these guys tight right here. Clickages. Uno mas. All right, battery coming in. Slide that guy down onto the tray. Get the cable out of there. Get the other cable out of there. 
Come here. Positive. There we go. Zzz. Negatory. Zzz. And of course, there's the hold down wedge. Can't forget the wedge. Let's get this thing down here. Ah, I'm almost going to drop it. Hang on. Ran out of space fast in this thing, didn't I? Let's start the screw for the wedge. Now. Can't reach, I need an extension. Take two, battery clamp. Uh, there we go. Clamp clickage. One quick tool change and we can tighten down the clamps on the battery. A little bit of a click. Another, there we go. All right, let's check it again. Restarting the engine. Continues to load. Check uh, engine coolant. A little bit low. Give it a refill here. Woohoo! There we go. Tight, wiped, wiped and tight. Good to go. Okay, we've got one more cover to slip in right here. Let's get that guy on. And I'm gonna lift this up one more time. We've gotta put the bottom cover on and uh, then we'll get it off the rack and pull her out. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's go for a ride. I'm excited. This car's been here a long time. I'm ready to, ready to see it rock and roll and get out of here. It's gonna be good. Pulling out the auto, hawking the horn in victory. That horn sounded kind of weak. No matter. Swing this thing around the corner here. And away we go. It's moving. It's rolling. It's driving. It's still rolling. All right. Yeah, there's always these slight moments of just uh, panic and uncertainty with jobs like this because you never know and we're pulling out we're rolling along it's moving gear ratio is changing so far so good Put the windows up nice and smooth all right i think we have victory here we got a dirty windshield good thing i filled the washi fluid there we go. Here we go, we got an uphill climb for takeoff. We're accelerating gently. I don't wanna, I don't wanna abuse this little unit too far, or too hard just yet. There's the shop. Hello, shop. It's the aerial view. Look, there's wife unit standing out in the parking lot. Ha! Ah, that's cool. Full speed. Very nice. I am, uh, I am pleased with the results of this transmission replacement. All right, guys, I think we're good to go here. I'm gonna do a couple more trips uh, over the bridge and around the block and up and down the road a little bit just to make sure temperature comes up. Uh, I'll need to go back into the shop, recheck fluid level one more time with the trans, the coolant, the power steering. Uh, I think that was all of them. I did an oil change on it too, but that, that's already been checked, so that's good. So uh, that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this entire series of videos. Again, if you missed uh, the uh, the first two uh, versions uh, of this procedure, just go down to this video's description and there will be links that will take you back in time to the introduction and disassembly of this uh, particular Jeep. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourself a good day, a great day, fantastic day, awesome day. See you guys later in the transmission, in the Jeep, in the video. See you next time. More speed. Engine hose cam. You can't do that. Ruin the engine. Hose it down.
Goodbye, dirt. Goodbye, audience.